Hello, back from holidays today. And to see the S&P 500 still hanging on to its lingering uptrend. Is it a time for a bit of consolidation? So we'll start with the S&P 500. Here a weekly chart or the perspective over the next few quarters. As you can see following the consolidation from the second quarter 2015 into the first quarter this year, uh, the S&P 500 recently had a strong breakout to the upside. We believe that this breakout should be followed by further uh, strength and an uptrend that could last possibly several core quarters. And you can see here the risk index is in the middle of the range and moving higher. Yet, uh, this move, which was very strong, created some stress on our envelopes. So before the second strong move up happens, we believe we could be uh, at the time where we could expect a bit of consolidation. Moving on to the daily chart or the perspective over the next few months, we can see that it is still in an uptrend and still has some potential up, possibly above 2200 and into the 2300 levels. That said, you could also see a bit of stress on our envelopes here and our risk index, which is getting close to the overbought. So also here, before it actually happens, we believe that we could see a few weeks of consolidation down. Finally, on an hourly chart, a similar situation. Uh, we could see that our impulsive up targets have been met. So this is the perspective over the next few weeks. And that we are also at stress with our envelopes. We could also see that the risk index is slowly approaching the overbought. Hence, a uh, confirmation that we're probably getting towards a high level uh, a negative risk reward over the next few weeks. Now to summarize it, well, three uptrends, potential continuous uptrend, three bulls, uh, possibly further upside over the next few quarters, over the next few months, but in the meantime, we're pretty much stretched here and we could expect one of two weeks of consolidation down. Now what happens to the euro during this period? Now this is the weekly chart of the euro or the perspective over the next few weeks. As you can see, the euro for us is still in a downtrend. It still has some potential in time and targets, possibly uh, below 107. That said, uh, the longer uh, this, this uh, uh, flattish consolidation lasts, the least likely it is to fulfill these targets, especially that uh, our risk index is slowly entering the oversold. So we are turning prudent bear here on the euro. On the daily, or the perspective over the next few months, uh, we've seen a move, a move up since uh, last December and since uh, May, a consolidation down. It hasn't been able to make it into impulsive territory below 108.55, which is a sound of strength, and it's now attempting to move up again. Our view is that if the bullish trend on equities is to continue over the next few quarters, it probably means that uh, uh, other currencies that the dollars should profit as investors reallocate a capital to more risky currencies. That said, at the moment, it is still a bear and we should still remain prudent over the next few weeks. Looking at the hourly or the perspective over the next few weeks, we can see that although we could see potential above 113 here, uh, our risk reward situation has deteriorate, deteriorated. We're in the overbought on the risk index and our envelopes are touching each other. Hence, we could have a bit of softness here to accompany uh, a correction in equities. If we look at all three trends, we're still negative and prudent on uh, the weekly and the daily and the hourly is in an intermediate move up. So a potential intermediate bottom in, in what is still labeled a downtrend. Moving on to oil. Oil theoretically over the long term, this weekly chart, is still in its long term downtrend. Yet we have had an oversold situation and we are in a reaction up. We would pro probably await this downtrend to slowly turn over the next few quarters. If we look at the daily, we've had a first leg up, some exaggerations and a correction period. We've reached our correction down targets and are trying 
to uh, resume the uptrend as we speak. The hourly or the perspective over the next few weeks is quite strong and, is, and could bring us back above 49, possibly above 51. Yet also here, we do see first signs of exaggerations here. So uh, we will probably have a bit of a setback in this move over the next few weeks to accompany the consolidation and equities. So with two bears, we can't turn outright bullish yet. Yet we do think the situation is promising. Uh, the hourly is moving up. Uh, at the moment, we must label it as an intermediate bottom. Uh, yet we do see some potential over the next few weeks. In the meantime, a bit of stress here could bring a bit of a setback. Finally, on gold, gold is uh, a bit of both. It's a defensive asset, uh, uh, but it's also uh, an asset which uh, accompanies inflation. And if our scenario is correct on equities, on oil, uh, then uh, it is, it is uh, going to fare quite well. Probably not as well as other commodities, but it's going to fare quite well. What we can see is that we've had a correction up since the uh, last quarter last year, and that it's pretty much reached its potential. On the daily chart, we've had a top and we're consolidating here, but we're still in a bull, so we could still expect some retests here over the next few weeks, especially if equities consolidate. Finally, on the early, well, there's still some risk to, to, to the downside with a bear here, uh, and uh, some potential, the possibility to move back, back down below 1300. But as you can see here, we are in a triangle and this triangle hasn't broken yet. And our risk index is falling pretty quickly. So perhaps, and that is a possibility that we want to envisage, is that if we have a consolidation on equities, we could see a bounce here, possibly to retest tops on gold. So with two bulls, it's hard for us to be too negative here on gold. And at the moment, we're still prudent in watching these crucial levels, possibly around 1330. And that's it for this week. Thank you very much.